So I'm Ashley uh, Ringrose, I'm studio head of SMG Studio, and we're making uh, Moving Out. So what is this game, Moving Out? Uh, what is it? It's, well, the shorthand, the cheeky answer is uh, it's like Overcooked, but you're moving furniture. <laughs> so it's a cooperative couch co-op game where you've got to uh, you know, work with each other to kind of move things as fast as you can. Where did the idea for this game come from? We're actually working with a developer from Sweden called, uh, I think he's uh, Jon, uh, Jon Ruggel, and he kind of came to us and said, I've got this idea, uh, like a prototype of moving furniture, and we kind of like took it from there. We, so yeah, it came from his experience of helping his friends move, which everyone kind of does at some point in life. And I'm, and I'm also thinking about that famous Friends episode of the couch trying oh, yeah. to go up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the thing with moving, there's so much, everyone's moved, it's very relatable, it's also universal, so everyone has a story or a moment like, oh, I remember, you're really bad at that, or, you know, so even just getting a, a bed through a door in the game, it, it was like, this happened to us, you know, so that, that's what kind of attracted us to the, to the game in itself, like, that theme of moving and putting a, a wholesome, fun, wacky spin on it just kind of opens up a lot of like interesting uh, game mechanics, but also just like interesting stories for people to kind of play through. And what game engine did you build your game in? Uh, it's Unity. We, all of our games have been in Unity. So. so what's it been like working in Unity and what have they provided in terms of tech and support to help make this game reality? Uh, well, tech and support, I mean, we pay them money for the, for the software. Uh, I mean, for us, it's like there's uh, each console has its own version of Unity. There, there's a community behind it. They do regular updates. so. You know, if you, if you encounter a problem, you can kind of jump into that, uh, so you're not alone. Someone else has already solved a problem for you. But uh, in terms of support, like I don't know, they're not—they're about to go IPO, so they're not really giving out much support right now. <laughs> they decided to make as much money as they can to like maximize their IPO. So, what's it like being here at PAX West, seeing people play your game in person and stuff like that outside your closed doors? Yeah, it's—we uh, showed it at PAX East the first time, and it's the second time. It, going to a PAX is like a, it's like energizing your batteries. Because everyone, everyone here is just here to play games, and they have so much fun with the game that, and you just get this positive feedback. You're kind of like on a high. You don't even realize you've been standing for four days, and so we're only on day one. So I'm still, still kind of fresh, but it, it really energizes your batteries. And you know, I send photos and I tell the team like, this kid had a great time. This grandma was playing with her daughter, a uh, granddaughter, and you know, they really get a charge from that as well. Because it's, you, you, you have some play tests, but when you just have hundreds of people playing your game and having a good time. It's, it kind of like sinks in like, oh wow, we have something really good here. Have you gotten any community, uh, other than the positive feedback, have you discovered any bugs or uh, stuff that you've improved upon the game from going to shows like PAX East and West? Yeah, PAX East was good because there was, when you got so many different people that aren't used to playing the game, they played a different way than you're expecting. So yeah, we've definitely tidied up the, uh, some of the kind of bound boxes. People were throwing boxes out of the level and I'd be like, oh sorry, we have to stop this level now. So that's all fixed now. So it was really tightening it up. The core game hasn't changed much. We've just tightened up the levels, uh, tightened up the art, and added sound now, even though you can't even hear it because it's so noisy. So it's like, oh, it all has sound, but you know, can't hear it. Uh, but yeah, I think having that just constant user testing, um, and, and, and I, was, I, I like be videoing on my phone when something goes wrong, so they go, oh yeah, yeah we'll tweak that. Because the developers and us, we play it a certain way, and we see other people play it the, like, the wrong way. There's no wrong way to play the game. But they played the wrong way. It's like, oh yeah, we should really like identify or you know signal to the user like do it this way to kind of avoid some of that kind of pitfalls. So when does your game come out and what platforms will it be on? Yeah, we're, uh, we just announced 2020. Uh, when that is, it's, it's going to be early-ish 2020 and all the platforms uh, simultaneously. So that's like your Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam. So yeah. Nintendo Switch. Oh, Switch. Did I, I said that first, right? Yeah. Oh, Switch. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's been our, I mean, that's been our most popular platform for Death Squared, our previous game. And that audience is just, they'll just eat up interesting games. And I think uh, this will really suit that. So it, it, you know, we're actually building on Switch as our test device to make sure it runs like that. Um, so the performance is really good. And then, we, then we'll worry about the uh, more hype, you know, the, the Xbox and PlayStation. But we, as long as it runs on the Switch, we're, we're going to be happy. Now, what, if, what did you learn from Death Squared that you've kind of applied and improved upon in moving out? Did you take any lessons from that any, at all? Oh, a lot. Uh, one, uh, we wanted to partner with Team 17, so we didn't do it all ourselves. We let that. There's a lot of work there. Two, uh, make something that's like visually interesting and a GIF um, and really varied. Like Death Square was fun, but all the levels look the same, all the art looked the same. So one screenshot looked the same as the others. So this one, we tried to maximize the kind of you know visual appeal. Uh, don't have the word death in the title <laughs> and keep it as wholesome as you can. So 
um, and wholesome with a really kind of, we're kind of going down, down like an 80s cartoon kind of feel where it's like, you know, we've got a haunted house and why is there a haunted house? It just is, you know, like, because it's fun. You know, you don't need to post-rationalize everything. So yeah, just those kind of learnings, like make it visually appealing, make it universally kind of um, interesting and, and replayability as well. A puzzle game, not as much replayability. So the way you play uh, moving out is, you know, you can do it multiple ways. We've got speed running mode kind of thing where you can kind of maximize your strategy. So yeah, we, we, we learn a lot. It's kind of like taking that and really evolved it.